He just wanted to help. That's really all he ever wanted. But alas, this is the story. So it was a bright sunrise on the village, but something just felt wrong. The villagers could feel it in the air. However, their feelings were unfounded, as everything was normal that morning. The sun was shining, the crops were growing, and the water was flowing. It was a peaceful day. Well, until they arrived. The pillagers charged into the village, armed with their crossbows. They struck. They were relentless. Most all the villagers were killed, and the village was burnt to the ground. There lay only one survivor, one young villager child, who had luckily been able to escape from the carnage and sought refuge in the underground. He had always been warned to stay away from here, but right now, it was his only option. And as the fire raged on above, he foolishly descended deeper into the caverns. The air felt cold, but he saw some light. It was a torch, and so the villager ran towards it, and he quickly realized that it was some sort of abandoned mine. <laughs> Oh no, they were coming for him. He had to move now and hide. And so he ran as quickly and quietly as he possibly could into the darkness of the mines. But this place felt eerie. He knew that he was all alone down here, yet at the same time, he felt like he was being watched. But anyways, that clearly wasn't the case. No one else was down here. And so he continued going deeper into the mines hoping that that would bring him safety. And rather soon he found a minecart. That was cool. He had heard of those before, but he had never actually seen one. And so he was just examining it when, wait, what was that sound? Oh no, the cave was collapsing. The villager tried to run away, but it was no use. He was doomed. You really didn't deserve that. So I shall give you a second chance at life. He was back, but he wasn't exactly in the same form as he was hovering, and he felt lighter, and he glowed, and his face was an eternal shock, as he was now a ghost. He took a few moments just to process that, but eventually, in his ghostly form, he floated back up to the surface, and soon, he was back at what remained of his home. The village had been burnt down. Everyone and everything that he had ever known or cared about was now gone weren't coming back. <laughs> the pain he felt was so severe that the tears that fell down his face had a profound effect on the world, as all the chunks surrounding him were removed, all lost to the void. The power of his emotions was so great that those chunks couldn't handle it. Now, luckily, he was able to calm down relatively quickly, and so not too many chunks were destroyed, and he stopped crying. There was nothing that he could do about this, and thus, there was little purpose in worrying about it. He had to move on, and move on he did, as he drifted aimlessly across the world in search for a new home. And soon, he found a new village. Now by that time, he had gained an appreciation for this new lease on life that he had been granted, and so he was ecstatic to meet these new beings, and thus he entered the village joyful and excited. Now when the villagers saw this ghost, they didn't actually think that they were seeing a ghost, and so they called out to the other villagers to see if they could see him too. And well, in a matter of a mere few minutes, the entire village was out, and they all began to marvel at this ghost before them. They were all so intrigued. None of them had ever expected to meet a ghost. And yet, oddly, despite that fact, all the villagers felt strangely at peace in the presence of this ghost. And likewise, the ghostly villager also felt strangely at peace with these stranger villagers. It was as if their souls were communicating, and on a spiritual level, they could somewhat understand each other. So, the ghostly villager, at this deep level of peace, decided to try communicating to the villagers. He wanted to explain what had happened to his village, and how he had run into that cave, and how there was this mine, and then the cave collapsed, and then he saw this flash of light, and then he became a ghost. He wanted to tell them everything. But there was a slight issue. While he was speaking to the villagers, he didn't exactly have the physical capacity to speak, and so all the villagers heard was. But that didn't really matter to the villagers. They might not be able to fully understand him, but he was a friend now, 
he seemed nice and friendly, and so they offered this godly villager his own house within their village. And soon, they all began to play. Now, they love to pick flowers together, and then roll around in the dirt together, and then climb trees together. They just love to interact, and they had so much fun. And there was just this deep soul connection between the ghost and the villagers that made all their time together so joyful and happy. Now there was still a lot of mystery surrounding that ghost, as the villagers had no idea why he was like this, where he had come from, or even how he existed. And hence, they called him Enigma, given the great unknowns that surrounded him. But anyways, all was good with Enigma, as they were all having a great time, and the villagers were certain that they often heard what was likely meant to be laughing from Enigma. He was clearly very happy with this new life. They all were, but soon this new happy life would come under threat, as on one rainy morning, the pillagers arrived. Enigma saw them coming. The sight of them sent flashbacks rushing through him. He remembered what happened to his home. No, he couldn't allow that to occur again. Especially not here. And so he directed over to the pillager leaders, and he shouted at them. You will not do this. Leave now, and your life shall be spared. This is your final warning. But all the pillagers heard was just... And so the leaders shot at Enigma, and they ordered their armies to venture forth and pillage that village. Their intention was to kill all the villagers, and this ghost wasn't going to stop them. Now, Enigma was enraged. Not only had his orders been ignored, but the pillagers had just tried to shoot him, and so in a fit of rage, he yelled out. <laughs> His yell was so loud that all the pillagers had to stop and cover their ears. But then the ground began to rumble as all the chunks that they were standing on began to descend into the void. In just a short few seconds, all the villagers were killed and the village was safe. So in the aftermath of this attack, Enigma just hovered there above the void, seething with rage. All the villagers ran over to the edge of this chunk error and they saw that Enigma had caused this. He had used his enigmatic powers to kill the illagers and save the village. They were eternally grateful. But also witnessing the immense power that Enigma held, they all began to bow down to him. He was like a god to them, as he had saved them and he had so much power. And so they all felt the need to worship. Never had a being of such power and strength worked to aid the villagers. But Enigma, seeing this, just laughed at that point, and he flew away so that he could go back to playing. So, the next few weeks went by, and everyone was happy. Enigma had for some reason developed the playful habit of stealing torches in this time, and he had made a very large pile of them, which he was very proud of. As for why he did this, well, the villagers just didn't know. But Enigma seemed contented with it, so they didn't question it any further. He was there well, God, at the end of the day, defending the village from nightly terrors and playing with the villagers during the day. He truly was great to have around, and it was a rather simple life for Enigma. Well, that was until one night, when the villager rode back into the village and exclaimed to all other villagers that he had found something truly diabolical, a mansion. But no, not just any mansion, a woodland mansion, the base of the villagers. This was where so many of those evil illagers who sought to end the villagers resided and plotted. As soon as Enigma heard the news, he nodded his head and he gestured to be shown the way. That villager thankfully understood the non-verbal communication. And with that, they set off towards the mansion. And in a short few hours, they had arrived. Enigma stared right at the villager who had let him here, and he gestured for him to leave. But yet again, he did without question. Finally, he was going to get his revenge. These illagers won't recover. They will pay for what they did. And so with no other villagers at threat, Enigma lunged into the air and let out a blood-cuddling screech. <laughs> Just 
Just like before, all the chunks around him, including that of the mansion, began to descend into the void as his emotions began to take hold. The anger was killing the chunks, and all the illegitimates were falling to their eternal demise. They knew it, and they accepted their great fall. There was nothing that they could do to stop this. Enigma was just too powerful. But one of Ogo was vengeful. He wasn't going to go down alone. And so using the combined might of all the illegitimates that were dying, he cast a dark magical spell, one so dark, that no illegitimate would ever be foolish enough to cast it. In fact, it was so dark that almost none of them would ever mention it. The cost of casting this spell was eternal suffering, but he was already doomed. He might as well do it. And so he released that spell onto the Enigma. The spell deleted him from existence and removed him from the collective memory of all beings. And even his very code was archived permanently. He was gone forever and no one would remember him. Just like that Evoker, and the Mansion, and now Enigma, none of them would remain. They were all going down. Well, actually, that wasn't quite true. As while that spell did do everything that the Evoker thought it would do, the Enigma was still alive, sort of. He wasn't in the Overworld anymore, no, but he was in the Land of the Forgotten. A cold dark world that was parallel to the overworld. It was where all deleted features would lay dormant. As effectively, Enigma had been deleted. And so he began to fly around and he attempted to explore this dark place. Now there were some odd entities here, but all of them were frozen in place. Forever dormant. No, he didn't want this. He was going to end up just like them. He wanted to go back home, and so he started to cry. He wanted to play with all the other villagers again, but that just wasn't going to happen. He was stuck here for all of eternity, and he knew it. And so he screamed out in rage, hoping that might somehow help him. And well, it didn't. In fact, it sent him into an eternal rest as almost all of his energy was drained during that scream. Also, that scream was so loud and so potent that even a god would die if it heard it close enough. But thankfully, none were nearby. And so, no entities were killed by that, luckily. However, with that being said though, in the far corners of the Forgotten Lands, his scream would be heard. Now the sound was much quieter over all that distance, but, it was still very strong, and so it provided enough of a shock to the Forgotten Lands that it would awaken a long forgotten entity. But to learn who that was, and what happened next, you'll need to watch this video.